Hey there, fellow Tolkien heads. We're back again this week with yet another prediction video for Episode 6 of Amazon's Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, Season 2. We just finished watching the fifth episode of the show, and it seems we got quite a few things correct from our previous prediction video. There's a lot to unpack from this episode, and we already have a few new predictions lined up for next week's episode. With Episode 4 having focused heavily on the Harfoots, Isildur and Elrond's company, it wasn't surprising to see that they made little to no appearance in this episode. As predicted, Episode 5 was centred around the plot lines concerning the Dwarves, Eregion and Numenor. Once again, just as we'd predicted, Arazon was declared as King of Numenor, and we've already begun to see him slowly moving the kingdom toward its destruction. Barazon has already begun the persecution of the faithful, along with his growing heretical tendencies as shown by the desecration of the Shrine of Nienna, the valour of sorrow and mourning. Elendil also, as we foresaw, was branded falsely as a traitor and taken captive, moving back to Middle-earth. The forging of the Dwarven Rings has indeed been completed. Our gifts of foresight seem to have been spot on when we predicted that Khazad Doom would be restored back to its glory thanks to Dorin's ring. We did say the ring would awaken Dorin's bane from its slumber, and we do see something stir when Deesa tries to recover the tuning crystal in a dark cavern. It could even be a watcher in the deep, because we know that one resides in the lake outside Moria, according to lore. One thing is for certain, evil has begun stirring within the Dwarven Kingdom. Sauron's manipulation of the Gawaithi Mirodain and Celebrimbor continued this episode. Honestly, this has been one of the things this show has done extremely well. The Dark Lord is known as the Deceiver for a reason, and it's incredible to see him manipulating and gaslighting his way toward achieving his goals. However, his obsession with the forging of the Nine Rings is a little strange, because Sauron has no particular interest in specifically forging power rings for men in the lore. At this point, though, we should expect that the show is quite clearly running down its own hill, and we shouldn't be surprised by anything. The forging of the remaining Rings of Power commences after Celebrimbor is pushed into a corner after lying to his High King and Galadriel, as predicted. Episode 5 was one of the better episodes of the series, with some solid pacing and build-up. The story just seems to flow so much better when the Harfoots are not shown. Now that we're firmly in the second half of the show, things are looking to kick off in earnest from the episode, which is gone away next week, finally. We've gazed into our personal palantir at our studio thanks to which we've certain predictions regarding what'll happen in Episode 7. So, without wasting any more time, strap in and let's dive headlong once again into Amazon's Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, Season 2. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Harfords will give themselves up to Gowdrim to protect the stores. Merry Mac and Poppy will get closer romantically. In Episode 4, we witness that Gowdrim threaten the stores with their deaths if the Harfords are not found by the time they return next time. Having failed to find out the whereabouts of the Harfords and their master's growing impatience regarding their failure, they'll undoubtedly return to the village of the stores. With Gundabale Earthola still being defiant and maintaining a position that they know nothing about Nori and Poppy's whereabouts, the Gowdrim will start wreaking havoc in the village to intimidate the stores. They'll eventually threaten to start killing the stores one by one, unless and until one of them reveals the location of the Harfoots. Merry Mac, being the odd fellow, will probably be singled out by them and be the first hostage they threaten to kill, unless the Harfoots are given up. At the very last second, right before they kill Merry Mac, we think Nori and Poppy will emerge to save his life and give themselves up to the villains. We also have to touch upon the budding romance of Poppy and Merry Mac, which was hinted at in Episode 4. In the next episode, it's more than likely that we'll see Merry Mac and Poppy grow closer to each other as their romance begins to blossom. It'll be one of the driving reasons reasons why the Harfoots will surrender to the Gowdrim. The stranger gains his star from old man Ironwood as he learns more about himself. We'll most likely see the stranger continuing to learn about his purpose and the dark wizard who came before him. Tom Bombadil will continue teaching the stranger how to control his magic. By the end of the episode, the wizard will probably learn about the capture of his friends from Tom and hastily complete his training. As an acknowledgement for his completing his training and having finally become more in tune with the world that surrounds him, the wizard will get a staff. The stranger will once again approach the tree, Old Man Ironwood, and this time, instead of trying to break his branch, he'll soothe the tree into giving it up to him instead. With this staff now in hand, the stranger will finally be a complete wizard. He'll most likely work with the stores who will mistake him for a grand elf to free themselves from the yoke of the Dark Wizard while rescuing the two Harfoots. We'll slowly inch closer to revealing the stranger's identity, but we don't think that'll happen in the next episode. His confrontation with the Dark Wizard too will probably have to wait until a much later episode. 
Elrond approaches the dwarves for reinforcement and rescues Galadriel from Adar's encampment. Adar gets his proposal rejected by Galadriel. We saw during this episode that upon reaching London to inform Gil-galad of the impending threat to Eregion, Elrond discovers that most of the elven forces are prepared to march upon Mordor. From the way Gil-galad interacts with him upon hearing the news, it's unlikely that Elrond will be spared much reinforcement for Eregion. The king will probably give him a substantial force, but it'll most likely be too small to fight against the numerous orc legions that are ready to wreak havoc upon Eregion. In order to make up for the difference in numbers, Elrond will approach the dwarves for reinforcement. His plea for help will be answered by his friend Prince Dorin, and even as the dwarves prepare to go to war, his father will most likely rule it out. The old king will become even greedier, having fallen further due to the power of the ring. He'll not be willing to have most of his troops leave Moria to fight the wars outside his gates, and risk leaving his treasure and kingdom unguarded. Elrond will most likely get little to no reinforcements from the dwarves as well. He'll likely engage the orcs in combat and come across their encampment where he'll find Galadriel. We might get to see Elrond go on a solo mission to rescue Galadriel, which he'll succeed in. The two will flee from the encampment, meaning Galadriel will effectively have rejected Adar's proposal. No matter how egregious some of the changes that the showrunners have made to law have been, we're sure that they'll not make the woman known as the Lady of the Galadrim work in cahoots with the orcs. As the central focus of the next episode will mostly likely be a region and the region around it, we're sure that these events will pan out the way we've just laid them out. With the forging of the Nine Rings underway and the Orc army at the gates of Eregion, Anatar himself will approach the dwarves for additional mithril but will be rejected. He'll sense the Balrog in Moria. We're shown at the end of the episode that the forges have been lit up once again to begin the making of the final Nine Rings of Power. We have to, however, beg the question, where is the mithril required to do so? For the Elven Rings, the Mithril was given to Celebrimbor by Prince Dorin, while for the Dwarven Rings, we're shown that they're again given a small piece by his father, King Dorin. After forging the Seven Rings for the Dwarves, we're pretty sure that there shouldn't be any more Mithril left to forge Nine Rings of Power, with Nine being the largest quantity so far, even if the Smiths of Eregion have reserves of Mithril, which is highly unlikely, looking at the amount given to them by King Dorin and the number of rings they've already forged, they'll need more of the Dwarven Ore. Sauron most likely already knows that the Siege of Eregion is going to commence, and don't want to risk the life of Celebrimbor by making him venture out to get the Mithril from the neighbouring Khazad Doom. We predict that Anatar will venture out on his own to the Dwarven Kingdom to get the rare ore himself. He'll most likely try to manipulate the Dwarves and make them feel like they owe the Mithril to him for providing their king with the ring that helped save their kingdom from collapse. As we've seen, Old King Durin is becoming increasingly quick to anger and greed. We're certain that he'll not part with even a coin from his hoard, let alone something as precious as Mithril. Sauron will most likely be humiliated and made to go back to Eregion empty-handed. We'll probably even get to see Sauron sense the Balrog, and he'll leave knowing that the days of the Dwarves in Khazad Doom are numbered. I don't know if you're aware, but I've been promoted to- <laughs> Elendil will be tried for being a traitor, but Miriel will stand on trial for him. She'll be proven to be the true queen of the Numenorians, as the beast meant to kill her will save her instead. We predict that in the next episode we'll see Elendil being tried for treason and inciting a rebellion. He'll be falsely branded as a traitor. Just as things begin looking bleak for the future king of Gondor and Arnor, Miriel will step in to rescue him. Taking the blame for all the actions of Elendil and the faithful in a bid to stop their persecution, Midiel will try to take the fall. This will most likely be the moment from the trailer where she submerges herself underwater and comes face to face with a sea monster as part of a punishment or a trial to prove her innocence. While all things, including our earlier predictions, should point to her death and the rise of Farazon with no one to stop him, we suspect that there might be a curveball here. Even if the story of Midiel were to end here, It'd be highly unlikely that Farazon and his supporters would leave Elendil and the Faithful alone for long. The existence of Midiel provides a point of friction against Farazon's ambition. With her out of the picture, the fate of the Numenorians in the show is pretty much set in stone. The only anticipation that'll remain is for when the island's destruction will happen, greatly diminishing the Numenorian plotline. While we know that the destruction of Numenor is bound to happen at some point without Midiel, there's no real drama left. We therefore think Miriel will survive her sentence by the grace of the Valar, and instead of devouring her, the sea monster will save her. This will further divide the Numenorean kingdom, as a lot more people will begin recognizing her as the true queen. It makes for a much more interesting plotline, and serves to extend the time before Numenor's inevitable destruction, which we'll most likely not see this season. The Siege of Eregion will finally begin, but Sauron will place a spell upon Celebrimbor and the Smiths to make them keep working to forge the Nine Rings amidst the carnage. According to the showrunners, the Siege of Eregion is supposed to last for about two and a half episodes. 
Seeing that there are possibly only three more episodes left for this season, we're pretty sure that the fight for Aregion will begin in the next episode. Now, considering the fact that the forging of the Nine Rings has already begun in this episode, surely Killer Brimbor and his smiths would at least wonder what the noise outside would be all about. In the books, the rings are already forged by the time the siege begins, so the original Killer Brimbor didn't have to worry about being disturbed by orcs during his work time. The show, however, has managed its timeline in such a way that this problem can't be avoided. The only possible thing that can come out of this is that the Nine Rings are abandoned, which is highly unlikely. Or Celebrimbor and the Smith remain oblivious to the death and destruction around them outside, with Sauron being a Maya and a master deceiver. Our prediction is that he'll cast some sort of an illusion spell that'll trick Celebrimbor and the rest into believing that everything is as it should be. We did see that Celebrimbor was finally starting to lose himself after having been pushed into a corner. As we predicted, in the upcoming episode, Celebrimbor will sink into madness at a much more rapid pace, and will surely question Sauron as to why he's being rushed to make the final nine rings. We're also sure that no matter how good the spell that Sauron casts will be, Celebrimbor won't be forever deceived, and the episode will end with the elf finally understanding that he'd been under a spell all along with Anatar's larger deception. That Sauron is the architect of all this. Marvelous verdict. We feel that with episode 5, all the pieces are on the board, particularly regarding the forging of the Rings of Power. We hope to witness some epic battles in the upcoming episodes, as the Siege of Eregion is arguably one of the most important events in all of Lord of the Rings. The Dwarven Rings were beautifully designed, and we can't wait to see what the Rings for Men will look like as they hold such an important position in the lore. Sauron's deception will end at some point, whether it's in the next episode, as we predict, or later. We'll have to wait and see. The stakes are higher than ever in Middle-earth. And the only way we can find out what'll happen next is by watching the episode next week. We can't wait for it to come out so that we can sink our teeth into it. We hope the episode will be just as good, if not better, than this one. We think it's safe to say that the show certainly has redeemed itself in certain aspects compared to the first season. Only time will tell whether that'll be good enough for it to be taken seriously by most Tolkien fans. We have, however, come to the end of the video. For now, we post these prediction videos every week and have a lot of fun doing so as it involves a lot of ideas being thrown back and forth. We'd love it if you joined us and told us what you think will happen in Episode 6 next week. There's plenty of other Lord of the Rings related content that we post regularly on our channel, so be sure to check them out once you're done here. None of the things that we do is possible without your support, and we thank you for sticking with us right to the end of this video. We'll catch up with you again next week with fresh predictions and talk about the things that we got right this week. So far, we've uh, been pretty spot on regarding most of our predictions, and hopefully that carries on into next week and the future. Until then, stay safe and stay marvellous. Peace. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.